Italian-American family. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of laughter. There's a lot of good food. And it always ends up in a fight. Rocky was an extraordinary guy. I mean, he just, uh, he was very passionate, very fierce. Rocky and I happened to be on the same bus, going in the same grade, and uh, we formed a bond. And uh, over a period of uh, time, we became very, very close. I don't believe there's anything that, that Mike wouldn't do for Rock, and I don't believe there was anything Rocky wouldn't do for Mike. I mean, they, you couldn't find two closer friends, I don't think. The boys would grow into men. Their bond would never break. A graduate of West Point, Rocky Versace became an Army Ranger and member of Special Forces. After fighting in Korea, he volunteered to serve a tour in Vietnam. And in his free time, Captain Versace dedicated himself to working in a Vietnamese orphanage. He really fell in love with the Vietnamese people. He really felt that they needed the kind of support that we, we were able to give them. His tours of duty in the military were really of service. And not just service to his country, but service to mankind. At the end of his second tour of duty, Rocky planned to leave the Army, join the priesthood, and return to the orphanages of South Vietnam. In October 1963, two weeks before returning home, Rocky volunteered for a dangerous mission. During the mission, he suffered three bullet wounds to his leg and was captured by the enemy. His captors put Rocky in a tiny bamboo cage that was infested with rodents and insects. Rocky's gunshot wounds went untreated. His unrelenting attitude soon made him a hero among other POWs, and his legend spread throughout the Vietnamese countryside. The enemy used to parade him around with the rope around his neck and his hands tied. Never bending on principle, Rocky refused to cooperate despite brutal and repeated torture and interrogation. He never wavered from his steadfast belief in democracy and freedom. And if they were trying to break him and get him to say something that he did not believe in, you could just forget about it. Forget about it. Weeks turned into months, months into years. And finally, after two years as a POW, Rocky's captors, unable to break him, executed him. Thirty years later, the legend of Rocky's leadership and perseverance still resonated. His friends and loved ones wanted to ensure that Rocky was never forgotten. Their long mission would culminate four years later at the White House. Nearly four decades ago, his courage and defiance while being held captive in Vietnam cost him his life. Today, it is my great privilege to recognize his extraordinary sacrifices by awarding him the Medal of Honor. On July 8, 2002, 37 years after his death, Rocky Versace became the first American POW to receive the nation's most sacred honor for bravery. Through their work to immortalize his memory, Rocky's brother and Rocky's best friend were reunited. Mike Heisley really is a guy I haven't seen in 35 or 40 years. The main issue was just to talk about this effort with Rocky. That was the main reason that we met. And in the process of getting to know each other because of, we introduced each other because of Rocky and what we we're trying to do for him, uh, we got to talking about basketball. One year later, Mike Heisley fought the NBA Grizzlies. He appointed Dick Versace as team president. Their history comes from a single source, an American hero named Rocky Versace. The real Rocky was the compassionate, caring, loving person who had ferocity of belief. He believed that what he was doing was altruistic, that it was good. It was for the general good. He believed that fiercely. Bravery is uh, not uh, physical toughness and so on. It's uh, mental and, um, and, and emotional commitment to your fellow human beings and to ideals. Rocky's commitment, compassion, and bravery defined him even until the very last second of his life. With his final breath, Captain Rocky Versace could be heard singing, God Bless America, sealing forever his enduring legacy.